All right, so I'm going to try to record a video. Uh, I haven't done this in a while of me just going through some some little math exercise that's part of part of machine learning. Um, so today I wanted to go over the uh, log sum exp operation and uh, some of the tricks associated with that. So let me try adding my iPad to the uh, video. Oh, I have to do this. Okay, so. You should be able to see my iPad. I hope the video, my, I don't know, I don't know where I'm using Zoom to record this. And I don't know where it puts my face. So I'll try to not cover up. I actually don't know where my face will be. So hopefully I'm not covering up anything. Um, if I'm covering it up, it will be a disaster. Let's see. All right. So um, this is the log sum exp operation. Um, it's off, it's also, I think it's exactly it's it's related to the log softmax. It's it's so in, in neural network language, you might have heard of the softmax, and if you take the log of the softmax, you get something that looks like this. Uh, it, but yeah, it, it's used for. The, I'll explain why it's useful. Um, so the my plan is so this is the operation uh, right here. This this thing. And my plan is to talk about why we want to use it and how we compute it um, in a intelligent way. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the problems that might come up if you don't compute it in a specialized way. Uh, and then, and then we'll discuss it. I, I want to talk about a few is issues that, that I'm interested in thinking about regarding this. So let's talk about why. So um, one of the things that we want to do a lot of times is we have something that are uh, the, some numbers that we want to think of as a probability. So this comes up a lot, like if we have, um, you know, like a uh, a matrix W and we multiply it by some data X and we want to pretend that, uh, that, that this, we want to somehow map this to some probability um, uh, of, of some, let's say labels Y, right? So this is, this is like a multi-class classification task. So in other words, you know, we have some data vector X, you know, it just looks like that. And we want to map that, we map that with W, we want to map that to some probability vector Y Let's call this y, um, and what we want for y is that it sums to one, right? We, we, it's a probability. We want it to be non-zero and we want it to sum to one. Uh, sorry, not not. We want it to be non-negative and for it to sum to one. So, uh, how what, you know what's one way to do that? Well, one way you can do that is you can say, um, let's say let's say you you know w x. Let's call that uh, I don't know what to call it. Okay, well let's we'll just say that is a vector, right? That's a vector of the length y. Let's say, let's say it's four in this case. So it's, a, it's four numbers. These numbers could be positive or negative. Um, and so one way to make them non-negative is to exponentiate them. So people will often, you know, go like this, they, they, they exponentiate it, uh, but that doesn't make it sum to one, right? Well, that makes it, that makes it, um, uh, it let me, let me rewrite this because this is actually easier if I change this to something else. So I'm, I'm going to call it Z. I, I don't want to, sorry about all the variables. So uh, yeah, so so z i let's say here I'll do, I'll do it this way. I'll just define w x. The ith entry in w x is called z i. I got really cramped. Okay, so I'm I'm just defining. I don't I don't like the equivalent sign for define. People people use that sometimes. I think I'm gonna do this one. So I'm defining it as, that's so messy. All right, uh, it's fine. I'll just say equals, uh, you, you all know what I mean. Um, so, so ZI is the ith entry in WX and that's just like a score, right? Again, it's just a score. It's, an, it's a real valued number, um, but we want it to be a probability. So one way to get it closer to a probability is we make it positive with this thing, um, but then to make it actually sum to, make, make it so that we actually sum to one, we, we actually divide it by the sum of, uh, let's say i uh, equals one. Uh, I don't want to use y I again. Whenever I write these, I always write like i prime, and that gets kind of messy. I, I know that people always, my students always get confused when I write that kind of thing. So I'm going to use j. Let's see, that's a terrible j. j equals one to, let's call it the number of classes, okay, um, of x of z. J, right? So, so what's happening here now is that this number, right? This number, uh, let's call this, uh, I mean, really what this is, is we can call it probability of, of uh, Y, right? 
y equals i. Um, and what you get is that if you sum across all the values of this, you know, you, you get that it sums to one. And you can sort of see that, right? Because the denominators, you know, are carry over. They're all, they're all um, the same denominator. So you end up with, you know, if you sum, if you sum, oops, if you sum for i equals one, equals one to, that, sorry, it's so messy. I'm like so not, not used to writing on the iPad anymore. I haven't done this in so long. I equals one to uh, what do you call it? Call it K of P Y equals I. That is equal to let's let's uh, let's move that down. That is equal to sum of I equals one to K. So messy. I equals one to K of x of c i and then you can divide we divide by you know this sum here j equals one to k x of z j and we can move this whole thing out right so this whole thing this 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 denominator oh shoot i can't okay this denominator that i'm selecting right now that is, um, you know, that's a constant with respect to the summation. So we can really move it out. Um, that's one way to draw it. Can I, can I scale this thing? Oh yeah, that's great. Okay, so that's that's it, right? So now you can see it's just one, right? The sum is just these these two sums are the same, right? This this uh, this thing here is the same thing as this thing there. So it sums to one. Great. Okay. So then 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 oftentimes why do we want to log this? Well, all right. So here's why we want to log this. Um, you know, a lot of times we're dealing with, uh, you know, large numbers or small numbers, and we just want to be nicer. And, and you know, this is an X, right? So you, there's an exponentiation here. It's e to the whatever. So why not, why not just reverse that? Um, it behaves nicer on computers. And you'll, and we'll, I'll, you'll see why. Um, basically, these numbers get, um, they get really nasty in real computers because computers have limited precision. So, um, you know, what happens is if when you take X, of, let's say you get a really negative score, right? If you get X of negative, you know, I don't know, even just like 3000, I think that might already underflow, which an underflow means that the computer can't even, with like a normal, a normal precision um, floating point number, it, it can't even rec recognize the difference between this and zero. So the computer thinks that this is equal to zero. Um, and so that's not good. So ideally we, what we want is to just store this number right in there. And so then, uh, similarly, right? If you if you hit, if you go the other direction, x to the three thousand, the computer will restore that as infinity. Um, again, I, I'm not sure if that's actually enough. it depends on the precision that you're working at. I'm pretty sure x equals three thousand already goes to infinity. Um, but but the point is that you know this is not that big a number, right? Like you can imagine a bigger number that comes out of your your w x uh, value. So um, so yeah, the the goal the goal is to store things in a ro more robust manner. Um, and then, so that's why people are, care about log, you know, when they want to compute this log probability, they have to, they basically compute something like this. Like they take, they take log X, X of, uh, oh, I was calling it Z, 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 I, and then they, and then they subtract the denominator, the log denominator. And this is finally where we get the log sum X operation. So log, of the sum from, I'd call it J equals one to K of X of Z J. Right, this is finally what I, back to where I began, right? This is what I started with. This is the log sum X operation. Like it's a log of a sum of an exponentiation of, of some numbers, All right? And so this is, you know, something we want to compute a lot. And, and, and the problem is, is of course like, well, I guess well, here's the thing, right? Like we want to compute the log, so it's a nice number, right? The log makes it so it's a, it makes it a nice number. But if you compute this naively, like directly as is written on the page, you still get like something you know that goes wrong, right? So when you could you first you compute the inner term, uh, so so first you compute you know x of like you know three thousand, um, and you want to add them all up. So let's say you x let's say let's say let's say z one. Uh, Z1 equals 3,000, Z2 equals, you know, 10. 
let's just say there's two numbers, right? So you add these up and what you get is infinity. And then you take the log of that and you get log of infinity is uh, not a number, not a number. Some of you who've worked with you know neural network code a lot have probably gotten lots of these NAN problems, which just give you tons of headaches. Um, it comes from things like this, right? Where, where you get overflow and then you get, you get some operation that tries to undo the overflow, but like that's not, there's no defined value for that. Um, or sometimes you just, it just stays in infinity, right? If there was no log operation, the infinity stays infinity forever. Um, yeah, so, so how do you avoid this, right? So now that's, that's, that's the question of you know, why we wanna do this. So again, why, why do we want to compute, or what, you know, I just showed you why we wanna compute the log sum x of z i, I'm going back to i because I am inconsistent, but oh, well, that's, not, that's not right i equals one, two, let's say k. What did I write at the top? Did I write n? I wrote n, okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so what? So now we know why you wanna compute it. So how do you do it? So the trick is that you can uh, kind of manipulate the, the expression and, uh, oh, you know what? I just, I, I haven't looked at it in a while. So let me see if I get this right. So the trick is that you can, replace this, you can multiply, ah, right, so you, I think the idea is you multiply like, everything here by a constant, let's call it a constant, and then you divide it back out, right, so, so you, 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 you want it something like this, uh, let me actually, so I don't, so I don't mess things up, I'm going to make a copy, so I'm just going to copy this, All right, so I'm gonna now manipulate it. So I'm gonna like this. One way, yeah, this is one way you can think about it. So you can say you, 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 you add a constant, or sorry, you, you divide by a constant that you then you multiply by in each of the terms. Um, and maybe it's better for me to write it as, let me, sorry, let me, I'm, I'm just going back and forth. All these are, I'm thinking of lots of equivalent ways of, of writing it out. And I think I'd like it better if I write it as exp of something and you'll see. You'll, you'll probably see why once I do it. Let's just delete that. And all right, so I'm gonna say x of c, and then, oh, I should have just deleted this, x of c. And eh, just for convenience, I'm gonna make it a minus c, minus c, okay. So this is the this is the new expression. In, so all I did was multiply by one, right? So I didn't do anything. I didn't change the value. Um, but what does this look like? This ends up looking like right? so. Now you can do some tricks with logs, right? So logs and and exponents, exponents. So you can you get this simplifies to log. Um, I'm sorry. So yeah, okay, the one way we can write it is not log exp of minus c. That's not right. It's um plus uh, yeah plus c. Did you do it right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, that plus, and then we saw the sum. Oh, it's the log. It's the log. Sorry, log sum of i uh, equals one z k. Let me rewrite that because that was so messy equals one to k of now would you would you we can use the exponent uh, a trick with exponents to combine what the things that's inside the exponent so v1 minus c c i minus c okay so this is the trick right so so now this thing also simplifies right log x with c is c so we get c plus log i'll just copy because my handwriting is messy enough i will cascade uh, i will make more errors. Well, maybe it's actually better if I rewrite it, right? Um, from information theory perspective, if I have a rest, if I have messing handwriting and I write it twice, then maybe you can then figure out what I meant to write. <laughs> um, but yes, okay. So let me just move this here. Yeah. So this is that, right? So th this is still the same expression. All we did is multiply by one. We happen to take the log of that whole thing, and you end up with this. So what does this tell us, right? We can now choose any constant value, or right? any constant value. See. And we just have to add it to 
the final value we want to calculate and subtract it from the, inter the, the interior of every exponent operation. And so a natural value you choose here that often people often use, this is the usual trick, you, you choose the max, uh, you, set, you set C to be the max of the Z's. So let's call it, I'll use J again. Z, J. Right, so that what that tells us right now. Now, if you think about what's you know what are what are all the z z i minus c's? Well, if this if this one is max is the maximum value, then the, the largest one is going to be zero, uh, and then everything else is going to be smaller than zero. And some of them might be like super negative, but we don't really care about that. That's like we're actually okay with that. Um, but I'll discuss that afterwards because in, in, you kind of care, but I don't think there's a way around it. Um, so what you get is that one of these terms is going to be one, right? So, so when you get, let's call, uh, I don't know, let's say, let's say Z2, let's say Z2 is the largest one. So then when you get to the second term in here, you're going to have, you know, it will be, uh, okay, sorry. The term inside the summation will be X, X of Z2 minus Z2, which equals one, right? It's X, X, of, X of zero is one. Um, so one of these terms in here is going to be one. The rest of them, we don't know what they're going to be. They're going to be something less than one. Right? We know it's going to be less than one. So, um, I mean, that's it. That's basically the whole thing. What else do you want to say about this? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's it. I mean, so one one thing that you know, one things to think about are like how how expensive is this operation? Uh, oh. Sorry, yeah, you know what I should do? Well, first off, it's not expensive, right? The, computing the max is linear time. You have to try all the values. And then computing the sum is linear time. So you didn't really pay any extra. I mean, you doubled how many time, how many linear time operations you did, but it's, it's, you know, it's still linear time. So usually these are small and they're not, it's not expensive then to, to you know, um, iterate, iterate over the whole vector twice. Um, but what I, what I do want to say is, let's go through the example now where Z, one of the Z's is really large, right? So I said that like Z is 300, uh, 3,010. So this is, this is Z, it's just two, two entries, right? 3,010. And so what we're, you know, what we're dealing with, we, originally we had this, right? Which becomes infinity and then our lives are, are miserable. So, so instead, we have now C is going to be equal to 3000, right? Equal to 3000. So we'll end up adding, um, by the way, what should this value be? One, one thing we know is that this value should be some, something close to 3000, right? It's because, um, oh, sorry, the, the log of this. Let me just get rid of that. This is what we care about, right? We know this number should be close to 3000 because like this, this term is basically negligible compared to X to 3000. So that's that's an, an, an intuition, but we can actually we'll actually see the real value. Um, actually, we, we won't because I don't want to do, use a calculator, but we'll see that the value is in fact very close to three thousand. So um, so our formula was was uh, you know c plus log sum x of z minus c, uh, and there's some index indices in here or whatever. Um, so what you get is uh, three thousand plus the log of the sum of x, oops, why did I write c twice? x of 3,000 minus 3,000 plus x of 10 minus 3,000. And if you, you know, you work these out, you get x of zero, of zero equals one, and you get x of, Minus twenty, what is this? Twenty nine ninety, something like that. No one, no one told me I was supposed to do math in this. Um, so you know, this is a tiny number. Uh, it's close to zero. A computer would think it's zero, so it's like basically zero. So let's just let's just say it's zero. So you get something that looks like this. So you get a log of one. So you you get not, you get three thousand plus like. Um, I mean, the, you know, what the answer ends up being 3,000 plus some tiny number, you know, uh, what's, what's this, log, log one is, um, yeah, I, I mean, you, you get this, right, log of 
of one plus log, well, log minus 2990, oops, they're not log, sorry, x, x, x of 2990. And again, this is a tiny number, so this is basically zero. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit bigger than zero, right? So you, get, you have some um, precision questions there, um, but that's the example, right? So the examples would basically get to what we want um, without, it, without the computer blowing up and saying, you know, this is not a number, right? So you actually see what the value is and that's what we want. Um, but let's talk about, so now what, where does this go wrong? Uh, well, so it goes wrong exactly here, right? So if one of the values in your vector is very large and the rest of the values are relatively small and, and maybe they're all the same size, then all those other values go away, right? They, they essentially disappear because when we do this, when we do this, when we take, you know, uh, X of, of one of the smaller numbers minus the super large number, you get a tiny number and it's, uh, you lose all that precision, but that's okay because a lot of times, you know, a lot of times those values are negligible anyway. Um, but that's kind of a hand wave. So yeah, the reality is that, you know, you're trading off being able to handle the larger numbers to sort of lose all the information in the smaller numbers. Um, but, you know, if you're doing the, for probability calculations, this, this does make sense, right? So what you're dealing with is a distribution, you know, uh, actually I shouldn't draw it that way. So there's a distribution where there's like one, when one value that's super large and then a the bunch that are kind of small and, you know, if these are all close to zero, does it really matter how close, you know, which one's bigger? I, I guess, it, again, even when I say that out loud, it, it does matter. It matters quite a bit, right? Like, it, like if you're doing, um, you know, some kind of like conditional probability where you have some information that you know that it's not this value, right? Definitely not that value. Then these like matter a lot. But if we use log sum x to calculate them, they might all be, it, it will be treated as uniform when they might not be really uniform, right? So I, you know, my example was 3,000. 3, you know, 10 and 20, right? I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, it was 300,010, 300, but imagine, imagine that the, the next number is 20. So if these are the three values in a, in a uh, you know, three outcome probability distribution, and we, and we find out that this is not the, the value, right? So maybe this is like the Monty Hall puzzle or something, then it's one of these. And this one's twice as probable as that. But if we did log sum X to calculate this, both would be uniform probability or like zero probability. You might run into some not a number of problems there. But and again, there's might, there might be tricks to get away from this. In fact, if you store everything in log space, maybe you can just get rid of it and do log sum x over these values without, without looking at, you know, just by removing that one. So you can do that. Uh, sorry, I, I have a suspicion that this might be covered by my face. Let me just move it. Let me move it here. So what I was showing is this example. I don't, again, I don't know where Zoom is putting my face on the top right or top left. Um, okay, so that's it. That, the last thing I wanna talk about is um, thinking about, you know, when I see this in neural network code, I often see people just write it out, right? People just write like, they, you know, they write something like log sum x of some matrix, right? Or a vector, uh, I guess it would be, yeah, it would be a vector in this case. Right, so they just write they write they write that thing out and um, and and it's fine it's fine when numbers are well, well behaved right like the, if the z's are all relatively same you know they're relatively the same size um, meaning they're like the magnitude of these values are roughly the same um, or if they're and oh, sorry, and if they stay small they 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 shouldn't say they shouldn't be too big um, then it behaves well and then if if one of these gets really big like if one of these starts getting bigger than a hundred then you start to run into problems. Um, so the question that I have, which I actually don't know the answer to before I started recording this video, I, it's just a question I have, and I suspect I know the, I, I have a suspicion, but I'll, 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 I'll talk about it, um, is can we backpropagate through log sum x, right? The, the, sorry, can we backpropagate through the trick of log sum x? So we have, to, we have a max operation, which already like looks sketchy, but you can, you can backpropagate, like there's a subgradient for the max operation. So you have the C equals max Z, um, I guess in, in like Python code, it would look like that. Um, and so then there's like that term and then you have, um, so then we're, what we're dealing with is uh, something like C plus log some, oops, I'm mixing math and I meant to write, write it as if it's code. So log some 
exp of whoops <laughs> i just closed the whole thing this is terrible code uh z z vector z yeah so you have this so so for there for sure this is all you know continuous and differentiable that's nice this part's the max so let's just let's just replace this oh you know i, I totally did that wrong i forgot to write the minus c which is the whole point of the thing so let me let me just try to inject it in there and let me move this whole thing down again I, i'm not sure if this is covered up by my face and i'm going to delete this uh no i'm okay with that all right okay so so i'm gonna yeah okay i still deleted i meant to do that all right and then so we have these two things Oops. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, so th this app lets me convert math to text, um, which I might do, but it, it, it'd be surprising if it can handle my messy handwriting, which I guess you all are trying to handle, so that's not great. Um, so let me delete this. Okay. Okay, so my point is that this is differentiable, like or sub-differentiable, right? So it will it'll essentially put only a gradient on the maximum the term that that it finds as the max. And so that'll be okay, I suppose. Um, and then this, oh, I forgot the final piece, minus C. Minus C. Uh, okay. Um, so, so this is all, I mean, I think it would work. I think it would work. So I, I don't know what the default things for like, uh, you know, how these are implemented in like PyTorch or, or TensorFlow. I think they do use them as some log some X trick. And so then I guess the gradient flows through, but is it, is it as robust as it should be? I don't know. I'm, I, it's interesting to think about. So let, let me know if you have any thoughts on this. Um, I guess, you know, that's, that's what we can do with YouTube comments. Um, but but I, I do know that like, you know, again, you can just write it the naive way. Like if you just write it like this in your code, it'll work as long as the values of Z behave well, but then as soon as they don't behave well, then it won't work very well. Um, and then this version, I just don't know if gradients flow through this correctly. Cause like this term would have some kind of like sharp subgradient. Maybe it still works. I'm really interested. I, I, that, that's a that's an interesting question. I, I I would be very curious if someone has a simple answer, then I'd be to see whether it works. But okay, so that's it. That's the trick. Um, you know, you might not have to use this because a lot of times these are already pre-implemented for you. But anytime you're building probability distributions out of uh, numbers um, by exponentiate exponentiating them. Um, you're, you're going to come across this trick or you're going to want to use this trick when you, when you have to do it yourself. All right, that's it. I'll stop recording. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll try to do more of these more. I, I, I think the last one I did was like over a year ago. So I uh, hope everyone's been enjoying this year. <laughs>